Hey guys, this is David from Dash Off-Road. Yes, I said Dash Off-Road, not Virginia Troll. Virginia Troll is no more. It wasn't really a friendly internet name, so it's gone, and we're replacing it with Dash. And yes, I do have a neck brace on because I busted my neck a little while ago and I have to keep it on and it's cut shaved, so I'm growing a beard. Do you like it? Um, today I'm gonna talk to you about driving our trucks with fully independent suspension and how we have to do things a little bit different um, coming from uh, our live axles. So this all came up from a post I saw from Matt Weber and I was just impressed by how much the front of his truck was flexing. So we teamed up for a bit of a collaboration and so I'm going to show you um, my truck and his truck flexing it up, lifting wheels and what to do when it happens. Let's get into it. Alright, let's get into it. So this is my car, a pre-suspension upgrade, I believe, going up one of the hill climbs at Loveday. Bit of a technical track, people get really scared by it. It's very steep, doesn't show you how steep it is. But what I want to point out is, when you've got independent suspension, it's so important to keep your momentum steady. Then when you lift a wheel, you've got traction on the other three wheels and it just glides over it like it didn't even happen. If you didn't have that same momentum, it wouldn't work as well. Let's have a look at that again. So you can see, because of the momentum, I keep going forward. And this is so important for independent suspension trucks. starting the seesaw and that's the what happens if uh, you don't keep that constant momentum going oh, back again at love day on track one and this was never going to happen but I want to show you because it's a bit of fun uh, I was diffing out here and it's I was just in a big hole which I didn't see but yeah, I'm too. showing you this so I can show you what the full droop of the front axle is and I must admit, it's not huge. So I'm looking at the center of the hub up to this line that I'm about to draw on there. There we go. And there's not a lot of droop at all. Um, that's just what happens with IFS. It's not bad. This is an 18 inch rim and 33 inch tire. So there's still a decent amount, but I must admit, um, there's nowhere near the flex on the front of these vehicles as a live axle but that's what all the cars are doing these days so that's just the way it is now i'm going to show you at matt's car because i was really impressed with the way his car flexed i'm not sure if it's just the angle or what it was thanks matt again i'll put a little link up here so people can check out your channel and the way he drove over this diagonally there was no wheel spin it just ate it up but um i'll freeze it here Look how much gap there is. This is a HBMC model. You tell me, do you think that's more or less travel than my STL coil sprung? Um, I'd really like to hear your opinion on that one. All right, we'll show you another one. This is in South Australia, Morgan SA. No other car that we went on this trip with got up this track, and the patrol did it with ease. Once again, uh, even though it was soft sand that I was driving in, I put it in rock mode because I knew I was going to lift a, a wheel, and that means that it tightens up that front axle, so it's almost like a locker. The wheels are spinning at the same pace. Keep momentum going the whole time. Smart Keep your foot sort of, you know, <laughs> about a third on that accelerator, and it just walks out like it's nothing. Um, I was the Good hero work, at camp at the end of this day. So now let's have a look at of what happens in the back axle because I believe even though it's IFS all the way around I reckon the rear axle has a lot more droop than the front axle uh, if you call it an axle uh, I'm told these HBMC models because it's that um, type of suspension that pushes the wheel down that this is like the ultimate for four-wheel driving look at how much that car is this is a 20 inch rim so just so you can understand what's happening 
that wheel has come down a long way. You know, fair enough, a Land Cruiser might get another couple of inches, but it's it's not much, not much at all. I was really impressed how, how this vehicle coped with that big ditch. Now, so that's HBMC. I'll go back to mine, which is the coil rear end. Uh, I haven't drawn a line here, but hopefully you can visualize it. I reckon I'm pretty close to the same amount of wheel droop at the back. You can tell me otherwise. The back end of these have a heap of flex, um, and it's independent. So um, people go on about independent suspension, and I think that's because they're used to seeing Navaras, and you know these are small upper control arms uh, or control arms full stop, and there's not flex. But when you get to a patrol, they are massive control arms, and they can go up and down a long way. I must admit, I am pretty happy. Um, anyway, put your thoughts in the comments, I'd like to hear them.